For five days, Representative Cori Bush slept on the steps of the Capitol in an attempt to draw attention to the issue that is the looming eviction crisis that will result because of the expiration on the moratorium on evictions. And members of the Democratic Party leadership just, they didn't take this seriously. They knew that the expiration was approaching, but yet they didn't take it seriously. So she wanted members of the Democratic Party in Congress to reconvene. She wanted Joe Biden to take action. And because she was there for so long, because she was so persistent and relentless and got the media to pay attention, that sent members of the Democratic Party's leadership scrambling because this is a really bad look. This is a PR disaster. So guess what? Cori Bush, she won. She got exactly what was necessary. She got Joe Biden to unilaterally extend the moratorium on evictions single-handedly so don't be mistaken about this this is specifically what happens when you elect progressive members of congress had cory bush not defeated lacy clay in 2020 who knows where we'd be currently because she had the idea being formally unhoused herself to make noise about this and guess what it paid off and this is really really important she writes via twitter on friday night i came to the capitol with my chair i refused to accept that congress could leave for vacation while 11 million people faced eviction for five days we've been out here demanding that our government acts to save lives today our movement moved mountains and that is exactly right because as jeff stein of the washington post points out biden administration expected to announce new ban slash limits on evictions details tk but likely more limited than prior national ban follows major pushback from progressive house democrats so again this reporter jeff stein is saying this is specifically the result of progressive house democrats fighting for it and while Cori Bush remains on the steps of the Capitol, or remained on the steps of the Capitol to fight for an extension on the moratorium on evictions, uh, AOC has been threatened to to torpedo the infrastructure bill. And that's really important given that the reconciliation piece is getting watered down by the conservatives in Congress. So uh, basically the point that I want you all to, to see me make here is that it is really important to get members of Congress who are progressive elected. Nina Turner could have been another voice here to fight for us. And sure, there would have been times maybe where Nina Turner uh, does something that I disagree with. She makes a political calculation that I don't like or makes me feel uncomfortable, or she isn't there when I need her to be for a particular vote. But ultimately, at the end of the day, having these members of Congress there to fight for what we also want is really, really invaluable. So to the naysayers, who were shitting on Cori Bush, saying that this was all performative and it's not going to lead to anything, all of you get to eat crow right now because she just proved you wrong. Yeah, she actually cares. She actually cares. And think about what she got Biden to reveal here. She got him to implicitly reveal that he was lying because as Sam Sachs points out, this comes after the White House repeatedly said it didn't have the authority to do it. They were lying, just like they're lying about all the other stuff they claim they can't do. Remember when they claim they can't wipe out student loan debt? And that's exactly it. So she bought millions of Americans more time. So the moratorium on evictions was uh, extended and now Congress has to take action necessary to address this legislatively. Cori Bush did that. So I'm absolutely pleased that she did that. Now, I just want to point out that, you know, when I talked about this previously, I made it abundantly clear that a lot of the issue here was the, the Democratic Party's incompetence. And that's a large part of the picture as well, because they knew that the deadline was coming and they chose not to act. And Nancy Pelosi made the decision to allow Congress to go on recess, knowing that this crisis was ahead. Joe Biden knew that the, you know, the eviction moratorium was running out and they all chose to not act. And now they're blaming each other. And of course, that is the result of competence, but it's not just incompetence. And to say that, you know, incompetence alone was part of the problem here would be, you know, an oversimplification because another issue is corruption. And this headline pretty much says it all. So as Julia Conley of Common Dreams reports, Democrats took millions from real estate interests before allowing eviction moratorium to end. 
So it wasn't as if they were surprised the moratorium on evictions suddenly expired. They knew that there was a deadline approaching, but they chose not to act because they took legalized bribes. So for more on this, Conley explains, as Andrew Perez and Joel Warner reported in the Daily Poster on Tuesday, the chairman of both the real estate brokerage firm Marcus and Milchap and the real estate investment trust SX Property Trust donated $1 million to the House Majority Pack on June 1st, days after the CDC extended the moratorium until late June. Chairman George Marcus also donated $263,400 that same month to a committee that benefits the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's campaign and contributed at least $6.5 million to PACs that work to elect Democrats to the Senate and the House. The Daily Poster suggested that while Marcus and his companies are wealthy, with the chairman part of a group of landlords whose personal fortunes increased by nearly $25 billion since the pandemic began, both Marcus and Millichap and Essex Property Trust stood to benefit from the eviction moratorium being allowed to expire. So corruption is an issue here, which really, I think, makes what Cory Bush accomplished that much more impressive because she got them to take action that was against what their donors wanted. So this is basically a story that really proves the importance of electing more progressives to Congress. I get that people from time to time are going to have constructive criticism of members of the squad. I do myself. I get that from time to time. People are going to disagree with elected officials who are there to represent us, seemingly. But overall, these are individuals who are new to Congress, who are trying to find ways to utilize the power that they have, knowing that they are a minority in Congress, and yet they're still incredibly effective given the limited scope of their power in Congress. And that's really important. That's worth something. It's worth fighting for people like Cory Bush. It's worth fighting for people like Nina Turner. And let Nina Turner's defeat, as well as Cory Bush's success here, serve as a lesson for all of us going forward. When we see an opportunity arise... For a progressive member of Congress to get elected, let's not pass it up. Like, let's not just like assume that they're going to be sellouts and you know cave to the establishment and not get involved in that race. Let's actually get involved and fight for them, because it's worth fighting for people who are going to fight for us, even if at times they disagree with us on strategy, even if at times they make political decisions that we can't necessarily understand or agree with understand that ultimately they are our allies and it is really important that we send more of individuals that are similar to Cory Bush to Congress. I think that should be really clear to people now. 